Hello and welcome to our extended disc mini webinar. It's our 15 minute webinar. And today we're gonna to focus on a specific area of disc styles. We're gonna focus on the strengths and development areas of disc styles. Um, my name is Christina Bowser and I'm the training director here at Extended Disc. And joining me today is my wonderful colleague, Marku Kalpanen, president of Extended Disc. Hey, Marku. Hi, Christina. Welcome everybody. Glad you joined um, us. Yeah, so we will be recording this um, in case you join us or you want to review it or and best of all, maybe share it with some people. Um, it will be on our YouTube channel, Extended Disc North America, as um, well as on our extendeddisc.org website. Um, questions and answers, uh, we usually aren't able to take them live because we are trying to pack a lot of information in during these um, very quick 15 minutes. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, assumption is, you know, you guys already are fairly familiar or have a working knowledge of the disc styles and the disc model. Um, so we're going to zoom in right on just kind of the different areas of the disc styles, specifically strengths and um, development areas. And sometimes I, you know, I call I was talking to Marku a little bit earlier. Sometimes I call development areas challenges. You know, I try to avoid the word weakness because sometimes there's that negative connotation associated with the term weakness. But what we really want you to understand is the disc assessment itself is, you know, not about good or bad. It's not about um, your um, ability to be able to do something. It really comes down to what is most comfortable to you, your behaviors, your en the energy it takes. So when you look at strengths and development areas here, the way that we describe or define strengths at extended disc is, yes, you could absolutely rock at these behaviors, but really they are the behaviors that are most comfortable for you. Um, we tend to own them, meaning we prefer them. Um, and we can autopilot, and this is um, I love this term, but I want Marku to describe it because he's much better at talking about it than I am. Marku, what do we mean when we talk about strengths and, and autopiloting? Well, I don't think I'm better at it, but uh, uh, really what I think all of this comes down to is a couple of things. One is the confidence, self-awareness to really take a honest look at who we are in terms of, hey, I'm not perfect. I may have some, some people say weaknesses, challenges, development areas, whatever those are, but we need to uh, own those and we really understand where our strengths and we need to make sure that we are not always repeating the same behaviors with different people. And uh, especially when times are challenging and like I think this so much in 2020 is that the overusing of our strengths becomes a challenge because when we are pressured and who would is not pressure in this year, we tend to begin to really revert to a natural style and overuse those behavioral strengths. So the autopilot thing is really about not thinking about how we do not modify behavior with each interaction and each situation. So we want to make sure we are always constantly thinking about how we, how we are most effective, not only in our professional, but our personal interaction. Yeah, I think one of the things that you said, Marku, that really kind of sticks with me, and I try to always share it with um, our clients as well, is that strong emotions are the enemies of behavioral adjustments, right? Absolutely. So meaning yes. that, um, do you want to talk, because that's your statement that I learned. Tell me a little bit about mm. what you mean by that. What happens is that when we get upset or we are on a press roll, especially when we are angry, we actually begin to overuse our strengths. You know, the last thing that we're there, overusing our behavioral style. So no, no, excuse me, my, my, uh, have a little cold here, not COVID, my cold. Um, <laughs> whenever we are in a situation we when we feel overwhelmed, we are angry, we have feel strong emotions. It's really difficult to be confidently self-aware and think about how to modify behaviors. So that's where we have to be really, really careful how we actually make conscious decision about what we should do next. 
Yeah, and I think that really kind of leads us into when we think about development areas, they're really very tightly aligned with our strengths because as Marcuse said, when we begin to overuse our, our most comfortable behaviors or we begin to autopilot, they really become these challenges for us. And so what I like to mention is that your development areas are not necessarily your weaknesses in the sense that you have the ability to develop them, which is why I like to, to kind of phrase them as development areas. These are just simply the behaviors that are not as comfortable to you, and they do tend to take more energy. But we have all of every behavior within us. It's just simply some of them take energy and some of them feel very comfortable to us. So it's not about ability. And it may be something for someone like myself who is not a task-oriented style. It may be something like telling myself consciously, okay, Christina, now that I'm talking to Marku, I need to think more about talking about the task and then I'm able to do it. So it simply is something that, um, think about it, just takes conscious awareness and sometimes maybe even practice. Um, anything you would add to this, Marku? No, that was uh, exactly uh, very well worded is that the <clears throat> only thing we have to do is think about what we're going to do next. If we just react and don't think about how we react and how we behave, that's when we tend to get in trouble. And all of us can think of situations where I should not have said that. We want to take it back. But if we kind of slow down a little bit, nobody's going to accuse you for being considerate and kind of think about it. Just don't autopilot, think about what I should do next. And those conscious decisions can make a huge difference. I think that's a great way to think about it. So what um, I have in front of you, Marku, is I'm just highlighting just each of the disc styles. So it just gives us an introduction about thinking about what is each style strength and maybe some of their challenges, or we can intersperse that with the term development area. So Marco, you see here, um, some of the ones that may stand out for me, you know, the D style strengths, you know, they're great at taking charge, right? Um, they can move very quickly. Um, they're the ones that are the risk takers. They think outside the box. So we think, you know, those big risks, big rewards uh, that we all kind of benefit from. Um, they're big picture people. Um, they're very determined. Um, and then we think about, okay, well, every style, is not better or worse. We all have strengths and we all have challenges and development areas. So for you D cells out there, sometimes you do come across as, because you focus more on tasks than emotions, um, you come across as insensitive. That you know demanding nature, that desire to get to the end point and to accomplish that task, it feels demanding to us sometimes. Um, you're a very individualistic style, so it comes across as being self-centered, um, you speak, your communication style is usually unidirectional, I speak and you listen. Um, so think about listening more, as you heard Marku said, think about those next steps and not everything is a competition. It's not about winning at all costs <laughs> and not That's being not. a D style, you can see where I'm like bleeding. Uh, what would you say about D styles, Marku? Well, I, we'll say this through the D, I, S, and C styles is that when we look at the strengths and challenges, they are pretty much the kind of a two-sided sword. You know, we, we see it determined being insensitive and so on. We don't have to go into every detail, but we have to really think about who we are in terms of what makes us, makes us succeed and how other people may possibly need our behavioral style to, to seem in a way that we don't want to to be perceived. So we just need to, again, go back to that. We're not gonna autopilot, hey, I'm, if I'm dealing with a D-style person, I can speak, speak my language, they understand that. But if I'm not speaking with a D-style, how do I make those conscious decisions about modifying my behavior? So I think if you understand your strengths and you think about them, take a step back and say, okay, how could this strength maybe be perceived in a different way from somebody else who's not like me. So if you go from that standpoint, then you have a better understanding of who I am, what do I need to do to modify my behavior? Yeah, and, and just another way of saying what Marcuse said is really at the end of the day, how 
we would describe a successful individual is that they own their strengths, right? They, they know that they, they move very quickly, but they don't ignore their development areas. Meaning like for me, like I like to talk and, um, and hopefully I use that as a strength in my trainer role. But I also know that, you know, sometimes my family tells me I talk too much. So I also know that that also can get me into trouble. But really, I always say is regardless of, you know, your strengths and your um, development areas, it's really knowing, as Marcuse said, what to do next. How can I better adjust in different situations, having that situational self-awareness um, so that I can use the strengths of my styles and I can also practice my development areas. Absolutely. Um, all right. So eye styles, you see, for eye styles, as Mark, who said it great, um, you know, I always like having him here because he gives me a different perspective, but they're, they're tied so closely together. So, you know, for the eye style, one of their strengths is positivity, but also the flip of it, their challenge is if you focus too much on negativity, it actually drains their energy. Or, you know, eye styles are very impulsive. That's great. But sometimes, you know, they're so impulsive um, that they can become disorganized. They lose track of the task. You know, they lose track of the details. Um, they become overly emotional. Um, they're very charismatic, which makes for obviously, you know, if you think about in terms of leadership, they use that charisma to get people to follow them. Um, but again, sometimes they focus so much on people, they lose track of you know, the task in terms of the big picture. Um, anything else you would add about eye styles, Marku? Just the same big picture that, you know, our strengths tend to be our, when we overuse them, they become negatives for the perception of other people who are not like you. So I like being energetic and flexible and positive. Some other people who are not like you may see you as being overly emotional, too impulsive, or even disorganized. You are not meaning to do that, but just because they happen to be different, they may see you, perceive you fair or, or unfair that way. Exactly. And then with S styles, um, S styles are on the reserved half of the model, right? So um, they have the energy, they have emotions, but those emotions tend to sit below the surface. We don't see them. Um, so we would describe, you know, their strengths um, as kind of easy going, right? They're calm under fire. We don't know when they're excited. We don't know necessarily when they're upset. Um, they're amiable, they're team players. Um, but that team player aspect, the, the need to kind of get that perspective and, and viewpoints from everyone, um, it, it, a perception of them as being slow to start or indecisive. You know, they are that team player. They have trouble sometimes saying no. Um, they can be more resistant to change because they're your steady eddies. They like the here and now. Um, they like those schedules. They don't like surprises. Um, anything else you can think of when you think of S styles, Marku? Well, I think about S styles is really they focus more on how other people around them feel. So things like resistant change, so being too modest or slow to start. Some of that it's internal, of course, but also they assume that some other people around them may feel that way. So they want to kind of uh, let's take it slow and see what happens next. And again, like with all the other these style systems, we need to think about who we are, especially under pressure, autopiloting, how other people may see that who are not like us, and then to think about who I'm interacting with, what the situation demands, and those in those situations make the decisions that really help us to make the best conscious decision about behavioral modification that will really bring about the best outcomes and the desired outcomes that we want to achieve. Exactly. And last, of course, but not least, we have our C styles. So C style strengths are, you know, they are, they become the expert of the styles because they take the time to understand the processes, to understand the product. They're very thorough. Um, you know, they focus on getting things um, done correctly and logically. And they're kind of our QAs of the styles. They focus very much on quality. Um, so challenges for the S styles, how they tend to come across to the rest of us is they're overly cautious. 
Um, they may be reserved, so they, we see them as more difficult to approach. Um, doesn't see the forest from the tree. Sometimes they're so focused on what is in front of them, it's hard for them to take in the big picture. Um, anything you would add about sea styles, Marcus? Well, I think what you said about sea styles is absolutely on, on the money. At the, this is how their natural behavioral tendency tends to make them focus on different kind of situations and what behaviors are most comfortable for them. And again, also, all, always comes down to this, not only with sea styles, but the other three is that uh, just understand how you tend to react and think about more on how I will respond. Excellent. That's a great way to end it. Thank you, Marku. Um, we do, uh, as we are approaching the holidays, we thought it would be great to do a webinar on holiday joy and stressors. Um, there's a lot of things going on in our world. Things are different, um, but we can always go back to um, our own natural style to, to better manage situations. And in this case, it is the holiday. So you can join us next Wednesday, November 4th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And Marku, if they wanna learn more about our other upcoming webinars, what can they do? Go to the website, extendedthis.org, extended right top hand corner click on events register for all of the webinars you want to listen to and do not worry if you cannot make the date or time because we will send you the recording i can't believe it's holiday season already i'm happy about it but here we go here we go all right thank you guys all for joining us and have a wonderful rest of the day thank you